Many years ago, I got a free DNA test from 23andMe, and at the time, the big news story was that this test could tell you whether or not you had the particular gene mutations uh, that would make it more likely for you to contract things like breast cancer and Alzheimer's. And a lot of doctors were nervous about that because they didn't want random people on the street to learn that information with zero context, which might make them panic for no reason, or it might mean that, you know, if they didn't have those gene mutations, they might think that they never have to worry about those illnesses and not get checked. For the record, I did not have those particular gene mutations, and it was a huge relief for me, even though I know the context. I know that genes are not our destiny and our, our lifestyle actually matters. But knowing something logically doesn't mean it's always easy to internalize it. Uh, as humans, we have a natural desire to want to have control over our destinies, and we'll push back against anything that seems like it's going to take that away, take away the ability for ourselves to control what's going to happen to us in the future. Which brings me to this headline I read recently in The Guardian. Lifestyle changes could delay or prevent 40% of dementia cases study. The article states, while some risk factors for dementia cannot be changed, for example, particular genes or ethnicity, many are down to lifestyle. And a study co-author told the paper, dementia is potentially preventable. You can do things to reduce your risk of dementia at whatever stage of life you're at. That is amazing news. Dementia is a horrific illness, um, or I should say illnesses. Dementia includes Alzheimer's, which is the most common type of dementia, uh, but it also includes things like Huntington's disease, Parkinson's dementia. Um, many of these disorders basically steal a person away in front of you. Their body is fine, but the thing that makes them them dies bit by bit. It's awful. And uh, any research that helps us understand how it happens and how we might prevent it is essential. And this is good research. Um, it comes from the Lancet Commission on Dementia Prevention, Intervention, and Care, which previously convened back in 2017 and reviewed the literature uh, to come up with nine potentially changeable risk factors for dementia. They were less education, hypertension, hearing impairment, smoking, obesity, depression, physical inactivity, diabetes, and low social contact. So they got back together this year and they looked at more studies that have been done since. And what they found was uh, even more evidence to support their initial nine risk factors. And they also found uh, three other risk factors, excessive alcohol consumption, traumatic brain injury, and air pollution. You may already see the small issue I have here. Uh, the Guardian's headline and much of the article make it sound like it's all in the hands of the individual to prevent their dementia. And of course, outlets like the Daily Mail are even worse, offering up delicious recipes to help beat dementia and saying that whether or not you get the disease isn't just up to fate. This is in a way a hopeful message. We want to have control over our health. We want to be able to say, here are the steps that I can take to protect myself. But that's a problem if it is a false hope, uh, if we don't really have that much control, which means we can do everything right and still get dementia. Uh, and it can be a problem if we read this and then have less sympathy uh, because the people who get dementia somehow deserved it because they could have done X, Y, and Z to prevent it. Kind of how some people might look at lifelong smokers who get emphysema or lung cancer and say, well, what did they expect? They did it to themselves. They did things wrong. In this case, the research itself seems very careful to not do that, highlighting the fact that these lifestyle factors aren't necessarily easy to change for many people. Uh, the study authors write, our new life course model and evidence synthesis has paramount worldwide policy implications. Culture, poverty, and inequality are key drivers of the need for change. Individuals who are most deprived need these changes the most and will derive the highest benefit. 
For instance, early childhood education is a risk factor, and children generally don't get to decide whether or not they get a good education. As much as the Daily Mail wants to reassure its readers that it's all in their hands, this is still a risk factor that is left up to fate. Did you get born into a wealthy family that values education? Did you get born into a society that values education? Or did you get born to a poor family in Alabama? And what about air pollution? If you have enough money, you can move to a place with good air quality. But for the, most of the planet, it's left up to fate, whether you get born in Melbourne or Mexico City. Another risk factor is hearing impairment. Not only is it fate whether or not you're born with hearing problems, but it's also fate whether you are in a country that has accessible health care to treat this impairment. Or if you got born into a country with workplace health and safety standards to make sure that you have hearing protection in jobs that require it. I don't want to take away all the good news that dementia is something that you can work to prevent. There are things that pretty much all adults can do to lower their risk, like eat fewer calories if you're overweight, which would lead to a lower incidence of type 2 diabetes. Combining that with an increase in physical activity, that would knock off yet another risk factor. Uh, plus, it would help with your depression, which is another risk factor. Um, and of course, you know, you can stop smoking and drinking to excess. Those are all things that you can do individually. Um, and while those are all lifestyle changes that most people can do, they're not easy. Quitting smoking or drinking or overeating can be extremely difficult, and many people don't have access to treatments that can help. Or even uh, do they have access to the educational resources to let them know how dangerous all of those activities are. Increasing physical activity is especially hard in places where people need to work 40 or more hours per week or where people uh, drive everywhere, where they don't even have safe sidewalks to stroll down or where the air quality is so bad that you can't be outside for long without increasing yet another risk factor. These are all things though that can be helped through social policy change. The true conclusion of this research isn't you personally can prevent dementia. It's you personally may be able to take certain steps to keep your brain healthy, and you definitely can vote for politicians who will keep their constituents healthy by easing income inequality, providing affordable health care for everyone, and making sure that everyone has access to education from childhood through adulthood. Please vote.